Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be filming a full-blown at-home pedicure and step-by-step -step gel tutorial. I'm heading to the beach next week and I've been itching to get these toes and feet into shape. The current polish is chipping, the toenails need some trimming and reshaping, and the heels and calluses need some attention. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. I'm gonna start by removing the remaining toe polish with 100% acetone. I recently picked up this bottle at the Dollar Tree and I love that it has this easy to use pump on the top. Take your time removing the old color, especially if you've been wearing a darker polish. We want to make sure we get everything off without the color seeping into the cuticles or onto the skin. They're looking better already. For this pedicure, I'm gonna begin by tending to the toenails before the feet. I'm using the Barefoot Scientist Clippers, which I've fallen in love with in recent years, to clip down and even out all of the nails. I'm carefully trimming each toenail a bit shorter. I like to keep mine pretty short so that they take longer to grow out and they're less likely to break. To avoid infection, you don't wanna to go too short. I just like to remove the excess white part of the nail or the majority of the detached portion, if that makes sense. I don't cut them down to the skin, but I do get pretty close. This has always worked for me. I've never had any kind of inflammation or infection, but do what you're comfortable with. Also, don't worry about cutting them perfectly because afterwards we're gonna go in with a file to even them out and shape them up. Today, I'm using my medium grit Olive and June file to gently file each nail into a rounded square shape. I find that harsh squares have too rigid of corners, which makes them prone to breaking. And then rounded toenails are just so odd to me, at least on me. Um, so the rounded square shape is usually my go-to. Make sure you're smoothing the tops of the nail and really getting in there on each side to perfect that shape. Once we're all shaped up, we're going to apply the Olive and June cuticle remover to each toenail and rub it in. With this metal cuticle pusher, we're going to then push back each cuticle and scrape off any excess skin. Now this tool works absolutely amazing since it's slightly sharpened on each end, but it can be pretty intense. So I reserve it exclusively for pedicures. I never use this on my fingernails. But be cautious as you use it. It is going to effortlessly remove any dead skin and cuticle, but you don't want it to accidentally cut through and remove any part of the actual nail. And that's just for this tool in particular. If you don't have something like this, any other cuticle pusher will get the job done. Once they're all pushed back, I'm gonna use my cuticle nipper to clip off the excess. So do not cut too close to the healthy cuticle, just remove the dead portion. If you do that, you could cause some bleeding, irritation, or infection. When in doubt, just remember less is more. After clipping, take the sharp end of your tool to clean up under the nails and scrape off any stubborn skin that still may be bordering the nail. If you don't have one, an orange stick or something similar will work just as well. You're gonna go ahead and repeat all of those steps on your other foot. Once all of your toes have been filed and cleaned up, we're going to smooth them out and get them prepped for polish. Using the edge of that same medium grit file, I'm going to rough up the surface of each nail before following it up with a buffing cube. And that is it for the toenail prep. Now I'm gonna quickly tend to my heels and any dry skin on my feet. This Barefoot Scientist Grater is my absolute favorite. It's gentle, but really effective. I prefer to use it on bone dry feet to remove any dead and dry skin with ease to reveal super smooth heels and feet. Although it is a fairly safe tool, you do still wanna be careful not to go too overboard with it. I apologize for the odd angle and the carpet imprint on my foot. I was sitting on the floor to do this petty and it was kind of inevitable, so we're doing the best we can. I love how you can see the dead skin fall right off. I usually use this on the side of my big toe as well since that area tends to harden up too. Afterwards, I like to go in with my heel to toe file. I usually find this at Sally's Beauty Supply, sometimes on Amazon. I'll be sure to link one 
in the description box below, but I use this just to smooth everything over. It's honestly the perfect finishing touch. This file is also great to use in between pedicures as well. It just helps to keep your heels super soft. After that, all of the prep is done and my feet are already feeling so much better. At this point, I like to use some kind of moisturizer. A lot of times I'll opt for coconut oil, but I'm out of it right now. So I'm gonna use the Barefoot Scientist High Dive Intensive Hydration Cream. I really love this product. It leaves the feet feeling equal parts hydrated and refreshed, and a little bit goes a really long way. You wanna concentrate on the heels and around the toenails. We're not gonna wash our feet before polishing them, so I rely on this step to get rid of any dust or dryness. Once the lotion has been rubbed in, I'm gonna pop on my toe separators. These are from Olive and June and they are far superior to any other separators I've used. They're rubber and super flexible. I love how they fit and sit around the toes. They're really comfortable and just a very well done product. When those are in place, take a cotton round or a piece of paper towel, soak it in acetone and rub it over each nail to remove any lotion or oil that is still sitting on the nail bed. You wanna do your best to get into all of the nooks and crannies of each nail. The plate needs to be completely dry before painting or the polish will not properly adhere or cure. Once that is done, we are ready to start this petty. I'm gonna brush over each toenail with a gelish pH bond. This also helps to dehydrate the nail plate and prep it for polish. When you're done with that, it is on to the base coat. I'm using all Gelish products today. This is their foundation that I'm gonna to apply to each toenail. This is probably the most important step because it sets the tone for the rest of the pedi. I have a few tips for you. One, don't use too much product. This is the first of four coats of gel and we don't want the paint job to look too bulbous. Two, paint as close to the cuticles as possible. We wanna make sure our color and top coat are painted on top of the base and not onto the naked nail. So we really wanna cover that entire nail with the foundation. And three, if you do happen to get any base coat onto the skin or flooding the cuticle, clean it up with an orange stick or your fingernail. This happens to me often, especially with pedicures since the nails are so small, but it's really important to make sure that the polish is on the nail only, not on the skin, not on the cuticle, just so you can avoid any lifting or peeling. When the base coat is on, I'm gonna pop my foot into the lamp to cure while I repeat those steps on my other foot. While the second foot is curing its base coat, the fun part begins, the color. I was debating a light pink or a white for this pedicure and I thought that Do Me A Favor from the Change Of Pace Fall 2023 Gelish Collection would be the perfect choice. It's a creamy, off-white, pearlized shimmer polish and I think it'll be perfect for my beach trip, especially once I get a bit of a tan on these feet. Similar to the base coat application, we want to apply a thin layer of this polish and do our best to paint as close to the edges as possible without getting any polish onto the skin or flooding the cuticle. Again, if you do, it's not a problem. Just be sure to clean up before you cure it in the lamp. While that foot is curing, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my first coat of color to the other foot. Now it's time for the second coat. I find that most gelish polishes wear perfectly with two coats. Every once in a while, a certain color will require a third, but I was really happy with my choice today because two applied just right. Once both coats of color have cured, it is top coat time. For this layer, I'm a bit more generous. I really want this to be the finishing touch for our petty. It's gonna serve as the protective layer and provide that shiny, glossy look that we've all come to know and love from our gel polishes. I always find that I need to spend some extra time cleaning up my top coat before curing. Something about this polish is a bit more liquidy than the others and it often seeps down into the cuticle. Again, not a big deal, but do take the time to clean it up before popping your toes into the lamp. <music> 
after the top coat has cured, we are in the home stretch. Spritz your pedicure with a cleansing solution or isopropyl, which is what I have in this spray bottle. Rub each nail really well with a cotton ball to remove that sticky top layer. This is my absolute favorite part because not only do you have fresh and beautiful toes, but they are completely dry. It's the best feeling and regular polish could never. I'm gonna remove my toe separators and grab my Sweet Almond Cuticle Oil. This is the new eyedropper, which I find so much easier to use on toes. I'm adding a quick drop to each toenail and massaging it in to officially complete this pedicure. <laughs> And that is a wrap. My feet look and feel like night and day. I'm ready for the beach and beyond because this pedicure will last me weeks. If you've been hesitant to DIY your own gel pedi, don't be. I'm not a professional, but I've been doing my own for years. And if I can do it, you can. It's totally easy to manage on your own and removal is a breeze. I do have a video showing you how to do that at home as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and leave me a comment below sharing any gel petty tips you have and any other video requests from me. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!